Hello and welcome to my video series on the Modular Brain Program Simulator. In this video I will show off the basic functionality of our R package. For this I'm assuming that you are already familiar with the basic functionality of R and that you have already successfully installed our R package. In case you haven't, I would recommend the use of the R package dev tools to install our package via those two lines of code. This will take a couple of minutes, but is probably the easiest way to install it. After you've done this successfully, you can load in our R package to your environment by using the command library. And after executing this, you will get some basic information on which version you're currently working. And if this is a recent and stable version, that should be all good in this case. And we are good to go. The next step is the generation of our baseline population. For this, we want to use the command creating deployed. And this function, as you can already see here, is providing quite a few of parameter options to generate your baseline population. The most, the two most important parameters probably here are the number of markers and the number of individuals you want to generate. So the command and snips would provide the two information that we here want to generate, say, a thousand markers. And the number of individuals is provided via the parameter n in the, uh, let's say we want to generate 100 individuals. After this is executed, we could apply the function summary on our population to get a basic overview of what we are working with. So let's see. In this case, we have generated a population of 100 individuals, from which 50 are male, 50 are female. There is just one unique generate. Uh, there is just one generation, which is split into two unique cohorts, which are the male and the female individuals that were generated. And we have a genome which contains of just one chromosome. There are 1,000 markers. The chromosome has a length of five morgans and a physical size of 0.5 gigabases. And so far, no traits were modeled. Um, and now I want to walk you through some basic changes in the use of creating deploy to change those numbers here shown in the summary. So let's do again the generation of a population with 1000 markers and 100 individuals. But now we want to do some changes to our settings. So for once we could think about adding multiple chromosomes. For this, the parameter chr number can be used in which you provide the number of chromosomes you want to generate. So say we want to generate five chromosomes here. Alternatively, you can also provide a vector which for each marker is providing information on which chromosome each, each marker is. Uh, here, this would just generate five chromosomes of equal size. Next up, we could think about modifying the lengths of each chromosome via the parameter chromosome lengths. So let's say we want to have each chromosome to have a size of three morgans meaning we have per meiosis on average three events of recombination. The next parameter we could think about is changing the share of male and female individuals. This can be done via the parameter sex quota. So if I'm setting this to 0.6, we will now generate 60% female individuals. Lastly, we could think about adding additional traits to our model. Uh, here we'll just talk about some pre-generated traits, but there are a variety of other options to generate traits I will talk about in, in other tutorials. So in this case, I just want to use, generate some purely additive traits with a set number of underlying QTL. So let's say I want to generate two traits, which both have 50 underlying QTL. So I'm providing the two with a vector of 2 times 50, and this should lead to the generation of a population with two traits which both have 50 underlying QTL. 
Lastly, and especially for utility functions, it can also make sense to name each cohort we are generating with a specific name. So let's say we name this cohort with the name Founders. So, and that's basically all that there is to our baseline population. Uh, you could think about using your own data instead. I mean, here all the genotypes generated are purely random. Uh, if you would have something like this, a VCF file, you could also just use that instead of providing information on how many markers and how many individuals you want to use. So, let's say we want to use this file and just using create and deploy it here. Um, we just have to provide the pass of, of the file we want to read in. Um, let's this one in this case. And after some generation, we'll see when we're looking into the summary. That we've now generated a data set with 50 individuals. This just contains 100 SNPs. The chromosome has again a length of five Morgans, and that's all that there is to it. Here I'm returning back to our population generated before. Well, let's also maybe look at the summary from here. We here now have 40 males and 60 females. We now have five unique chromosomes. The genome in total has a length of 15 morgans, 1.5 gigabases. We have two traits and we haven't provided any names, but we at least know that those have both underlying QTLs. We haven't modeled any correlation between those traits and we're good to go. All breeding actions are afterwards executed by the use of breeding deployed. And for this, I will show off some basic functionality. The first one I want to show off is phenotyping. For this, we want to generate a new population um, via breeding deployed. The input of breeding deployed is always your existing population. And next up, you would have to provide some parameter settings to do. Um, when generating uh, phenotypes, we first have to provide the tool with some information about how large is the environmental variance. For this, you can use the parameter heritability. Let's say we want to generate a trait which for the first trait has a heritability of 0.5. And for the second trait has a heritability of 0.2. And we want to generate new observations. For this, we can either specifically tell the tool which cohorts or which generations to phenotype. As I would just want to generate phenotypes of everything, I would just use the quick version of this and just tell the tool generate phenotypes for everything. Um, lastly, we have to provide the tool with information on which individuals should be used to derive the environmental variance to come up with a certain heritability. So in this case, this is sigma e. Um, we can provide, for example, information on use all individuals of our first generation to, to generate this. After executing this, um, we have now simulated some phenotypes. Next up, we could be interested in executing a breeding value estimation based on the newly generated phenotypes. For this, we are again using the function breeding deployed and activating the breeding value estimation by setting the parameter BVE to true. The only mandatory information we have to provide here is information on which individuals should be used for this breeding value estimation. In this case, I'm just telling the tool, use all individuals of the first generation for this breeding value estimation. And after executing this, we get some basic inputs and information about the breeding value estimation. For both traits, 100 phenotype individuals were used. 
and the correlation between the estimated breeding values and the underlying true genomic values is 0.73 and 0.44. As the heritability for the first trait was much higher, it shouldn't be that surprising that the correlation for the first trait is higher as well. For this estimation, we used our own breeding value estimation that is assuming known heritability. And by this is extremely fast computationally. But you can use a variety of other R package to perform your breeding value estimation as well. For example, the R package RRBLOB can be activated by setting the parameter RRBLOB to true. And as we can see here, accuracies are basically the same, so it doesn't really matter, only that the, this one is slightly slower. Uh, for larger population, those effects get, get much higher, but for this size, it really doesn't matter what we are using. As a last step, I want to show off here, we could think about generating new individuals. For this, probably not that surprising anymore, we are again using breeding deployed and providing the population as a start input. And then in addition to that, we are now telling the tool we want to generate 100 new individuals via the parameter breeding size. We could apply selection here and tell the tool via selection size how many individuals to use for, for generating offspring. Say we could choose using three male and the top 20 female. Next up, we tell the tool from which cohort those individuals are supposed to be selected. So on the male side, we're using selecting selection M from again information provided from generation database and cohorts. In this case, I will use cohorts and tell the tool use all founders which are male. And same on the female side, selection female cohorts is supposed to be done from the group of founders with the tag female. Um, next up, we provide information on which selection criteria should be used. Uh, here you can either select based on, on phenotypes or on estimated breeding values or on underlying true genomic values. Alternatively, just random selection will be applied. So here I'm providing a specific criteria and tell the tool for the male individuals you are supposed to use the breeding value estimation for the phenotype uh, for the female side use the phenotypes. And as we are generating new individuals, I will again name this cohort and name this offspring. After this is executed, we get some basic information. Um, it's realized that male and female individuals were generated, therefore it split the cohort again into a male and a female part, and it's telling us the male individuals that were generated are part of generation 2, they are of sex 1, meaning the male side, and they are the first to 50th individual of that generation and sex. Same on the female side, only that this is attributed to the group of, of female individuals. So far so good in terms of generating new individuals. After your simulation is executed, you can use a variety of our, uh, of our utility functions to analyze your population. For example, you could use the function get phenotypes and apply this on your population and then tell the tool for which cohorts you want to get more information. For example, you could be interested in the cohort offspring and the male part and now get information. We haven't generated any phenotypes for this cohort, so this probably make, doesn't make that much sense. Let's instead look at the founder males and see how those phenotypes look. And here we have for the first individual a trade value for trade 1 of 102 
for trade two one hundred and fourteen and same information for all the other individuals of this particular cohort we could also look make some deeper analysis for example look into a principal component analysis of our population in this case you could for example be interested in all individuals of the first three of the first two generations so i'm telling the tool you use generation one and generation two and this will automatically generate a principal component analysis and here is the plot for this Oh, let's zoom in a bit. Um, the colors here are each cohort as a, has a separate coloring. Um, you have to believe me for now, but the black and the red dots indicate the first generation, and the blue and the green dots indicate our generated offspring. And as you can see, the, the offspring cluster in three specific groups here. And when looking a bit closer, there are also three individuals, this one, this one, this one of the first generation that are not clustering with the rest of the individuals of this generation. And those are exactly those three individuals, those three male individuals that were selected. So we have strong stratification of the population in those three dimensions of those three individuals. And with this, I'm done with the basic introduction of, of our R package. In the next few lectures, I will go into more detail about all the other functionality of the R package.